Hi guys, it's Diaper Kiddo Jason, and I have Domino here. I'm not sure if you can see her. Um, I'm going to do something special tonight. This is something that may take me a few days to put together, so um, if I haven't posted anything in the last couple days, then know that this is why. Uh, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've been kicking around this idea. I would like to tell you guys a bedtime story. Uh, I'm going to break this up into a few parts uh, because it's rather long. Uh, I did a test recording of it and it clocks in at about an hour. Uh, so I'm going to break it up into a few parts because I don't want to put up an hour long video. Um, but this is a story that I wrote. Um, it's based on the Grimm fairy tales uh, story, The Three Feathers. Um, that's not really one that everybody knows uh, very well. Uh, and it's a pretty simple story, but I sort of embellished it and added to it a little bit, and now it's something completely different. And so I wanted to be able to share this with you guys, and I thought it would be a nice way to do it, would be to record a bedtime story. So um, keep in mind this is um, based upon The Three Feathers by the Brothers Grimm, um, but this is a different story. Uh, that I've titled Terrison and the Toad, uh, and you'll understand why as you get into it. And of course, because we're doing bedtime stories, I am all set for bed. Um, everything is kind of turned down, and it's quiet, and I am in my jammies, and of course, all set for bed. So, I'm gonna begin to tell you guys this story, and I hope you enjoy it. Once upon a time, in the far realm of Salomon, there lived a great queen. This queen had ruled her people with wisdom, justice, and compassion for a very long time. Everything was peaceful and tranquil in the kingdom, as it had been for the full fifty years of her reign. The queen's castle was great and it sat atop the sea cliffs at the farthest western edge of Salomon. Its white towers soared high into the sky, and when the sun rose each day, the castle seemed ablaze with golden light. Each evening, the lords and ladies of the royal court would feast on a great banquet such as the world has not seen since. There was roast boar and wild pheasant and peacock. There were golden fish from the eastern sea, there was candied nut and spiced pudding and apple tart and blackberry pie and iced cakes and other treats too numerous to name. And during these feasts, the minstrels would sing praise to the queen and to the prosperity of Salomon, and everyone was pleased. Everyone but the queen. For you see, the queen had grown troubled, and with the passing of each day, she grew more troubled still. She was growing old and she knew that someday she would die, and one of her three sons would inherit the throne. She was accepting of her mortality, for she had lived a long life and was happy, but she could not decide which of her three sons was best deserving of the throne of Salomon. In the queen's eyes, each of her sons was a fine young man who would rule well. The old queen spoke with each of her advisors about the matter, hoping to make a decision and put her mind at ease but none of her advisors could offer the, the answer the queen sought. Each of your sons would make an excellent ruler, they would say, and so we cannot choose. The queen grew frustrated, so she consulted the court seer, a wise man full of mystical ways. Your majesty, said the seer, you must test your sons to see which among them would make the best king. You must test them in challenges of judgment, wisdom, and perseverance. Only then will you find peace. But you must hurry, for you will die within a year. The seer's words gave the queen purpose and urgent conviction, and she began pondering on how best to test her sons. For three days, she locked herself in her rooms to think and to plan. On the third morning, she called her three sons to her. My sons, said the queen, I ask of you a favor. Mother, what do you wish of us? Asked the eldest of the brothers. 
I have a desire I cannot fulfill. I do not know what to do, the queen answered. Mother, what do you desire? asked the middle brother. I wish to have a dress made of the finest cloth in the world. I am growing old and feeble, and before I die I would like to wear such a dress. Would you go into the wide world and find me the finest cloth that I might have the royal seamstress make me a dress more beautiful than any other? Mother, of course we will find you the finest cloth, said the youngest brother. Thank you, my sons. Take these three white feathers to the top of the highest tower of the castle and toss them to the winds. Whichever direction the feathers fly, that is the direction you must search in. Make haste, my sons, and return to me in one week. With that, the queen withdrew to her bedchamber. The three princes each took a white feather and dutifully climbed to the top of the highest tower in the castle. Each prince let go his feather. The eldest, Prince Reinald, a somber and learned young man with midnight black hair and a great love for books, watched intently as his feather was caught by the wind and flew swiftly to the north. The middle brother, Prince Baron, a jovial and burly young man with honeyed blonde hair and a love of the hunt, shouted and cheered as his feather caught an updraft and raced off to the south. The youngest, Prince Terrison, quiet and shy, with hair of chestnut brown, and a kind face, and eyes of deep, sad blue, silently observed as his feather slowly floated through the air and gently drifted to the east. The princes hurried off to the stable and saddled their horses. They rode out of the castle together for a few minutes until they came to a crossroads. Prince Reynolds spoke words of parting and took the road running north to the city, the heart of Salomon. Prince Baron waved and laughed and quickly turned to the south road, a road he often took to visit his pretty young sweetheart's village. Prince Terrazin rode his horse along the seldom used eastern road, which led into a great and uninhabited forest. On the third day of riding through the imposing forest, Prince Terrazin stopped to water his horse at a small pond. He looked about in all directions, but saw nothing but trees and the overgrown road that he had been following. What am I to do? he cried. There are no villages or towns in this direction. How will I ever find a bolt of cloth in a forest? But mother said to follow my feather, and that I must do. Oh, but I had hoped to be the one to bring mother her cloth. I suppose it is up to Reynold or Baron now for I shall have to turn back toward the castle empty-handed. If you seek cloth, you seek it in a strange place, for there are no tailors in this forest, said a raspy voice. Terrazin looked around and spied a huge bloated toad sitting on a log nearby. It was, perhaps, the ugliest toad in the world, and it gazed intently at the prince. I, I beg your pardon, friend, friend toad, said the prince, bowing low. Though he was not accustomed to being addressed by toads and was quite taken by surprise, he thought it would be rude if he did not reply. I did not mean to disturb you, but I must continue into the forest, for my mother the queen has sent me and my brothers to find a bolt of the finest cloth in the world to make her a dress. She is very old, and I love her very much, and so I must continue, even though there is no hope. The toad eyed Terrazin for a moment as if deciding something, and then it hopped off the log it was sitting on. Lift this log, said the toad, and beneath it you will find a metal box. Within the box is a bolt of the finest cloth in the world. Take it to your mother, Ribbit. Oh, thank you, kind toad, explained the prince, but I cannot possibly take your cloth without repayment. The ugly toad smiled an ugly smile. You love your mother very much, that is plain to see. Love is better than any payment. Take it. It will make your mother happy. The prince again thanked the toad, who then leapt into the murky pond and vanished. When Terrazin lifted the log away, he indeed found a small metal box. And when he opened the box, his face lit with joy. Within the box, 
was a bolt of the most beautiful, sheer, luxurious cloth the prince had ever seen. It was sapphire blue, with birds embroidered of silver threads, and in their beaks the birds held holly branches with tiny rubies for berries. Terrazin carefully packed the amazing cloth away, still in wonder at his good fortune, and began the trip back the way he came. On the morning of the seventh day since the queen had sent them on their errand, the three princes returned to the castle to present their gifts. Reinald, being the eldest, presented his first. Mother, I have ridden to the city in the heart of the kingdom, and returned with this cloth. It is silk from a faraway land, and none is finer. A trader assured me that no cloth had ever been made so well before it. He held out a bolt of delicate cloth. The queen graciously accepted his gift, which was black silk with pale red flowers and golden prancing deer painted upon it. All the queen's advisors agreed that it was surely the most lovely cloth they had ever seen. Prince Baron then stood before his mother. Mother, I have ridden to see my love, Aelia, who has given me this lovely fabric to present to you. Though it is not so fine as my brother Reinold's, Aelia, my love, made it herself, and there is care and art in each stitch. Aelia asked me to present it to you as a gift from her family. The queen graciously accepted his gift, which was a handmade patchwork of many different fabrics in a rainbow of colors. It was beautiful, and all the queen's advisors agreed that great care and skill was put into the making of it. Prince Terrison then stood before his mother. Mother, I have ridden into the great eastern forest, where I met a kind soul who gave me this cloth to present to you. With that, he carefully opened his pack and brought out the fine cloth. Everyone in the room gasped, for it was truly the finest cloth in the world. The color was so vibrant and the cloth so sheer that it seemed to ripple like water, and the silver threads and tiny rubies sparkled in the light. The queen accepted Terrison's gift and pronounced it the finest cloth in the world. My sons, said the queen, you have all done well, and each of these fabrics truly is beautiful. I set you to this task because I love you, all equally, and because of each of you is brave, wise, and kind, and I could not choose an heir. But Terrazin brought back the finest cloth, and so I will name him to be my heir. This was the only fair way I could choose. Reinald and Baron were shocked. But mother, Reinald cried, Surely you would not use a scrap of cloth to decide a king. Judging fabrics is not a task for a king, it is not a task for any man. You must give us another test, mother, said Baron. The two princes begged and pleaded until the queen finally relented. Very well, you must take three feathers to the top of the tower once more, and once more you must throw them to the winds, and you must go forth in the direction your feathers fly and find the most beautiful ring in the world. Return in one week, my sons. With that, the queen left and locked herself away in her bedchambers. Once again, the three princes climbed the tower, and once again they threw their feathers. The results were the same as before. Reinald quickly rode off to the north, to the city, while Baron rode south to return to his sweetheart. And once again, Terrazin, road into the foreboding forest all right guys that's all for tonight um keep an eye on my channel and i'm gonna try to do uh one part of this story uh, every night for the next few uh, and then i'll post them to youtube and i'm going to do a full hour long audio recording for you guys uh once i have that done then i'll post uh, a link to that recording in the description for each of the videos that i'm going to be doing um, so if you're interested in having the full story, uh, if it's something that you maybe want to fall asleep to, um, then feel free. I'll have that up in the description as soon as possible. And in the meantime, sweet dreams, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.